So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can elevate your floor plans. Maybe you're seeing some floor plans out there that look slightly better, or you're just trying to stand out. So I'm going to grab a basic floor plan and create a 3D one with a bit more depth. We're going to add assets, materials, lighting, and then we're going to bring it to Photoshop and add in your own kind of character and style to it. So if you've been feeling that your floor plans are a bit basic or they just need something to stand out, watch this video and I'll show you exactly how you can do it or exactly how I can do it. So the walls are super easy. All you need to do is grab them, add a shell modifier, and then set it to the height you want. And usually the bottom ones are about three meters and we're pretty much done. So now that we have the walls in, we're gonna quickly add in the windows. Add an edit mod poly on top. Let's open up our ribbon, quick slice. And I'm just gonna do two cuts. I'm gonna cut along here. I'm gonna go into edge mode, sorry, vertex mode. And I'm just gonna flatten this. I'm gonna go back to my quick slice. I'm gonna slice along here again, scale it down so it's flat. I'm gonna check the height here, and this is gonna be the height of our door openings. That's usually about 2.1. The bottom, we're gonna go up 0.45 for now, and we can always change that later. We can go in here, and we can go to Polygon, and we know a door is happening in here, so we can go this section to this section, and we can start bridging these together. So once I hit bridge, this is what we have, and we're gonna do this wherever we have a door or a window opening. And just like that, you have the walls done. You have door openings, you have the window openings, and we can change the height of these as we go on. And let's quickly jump onto the flooring now. So go to create, go to splines, hit line, and we're gonna make sure that snap is on, and I'm gonna switch this to 2.5D so it stays flat. So here's the first bedroom. Let's draw that one in. Point by point, I'm gonna start drawing these in. I'm gonna hit every single point as I go in, just so I get as accurate as possible. And join that up, click yes. And just like that, we have our first floor here and add an edit poly on top. So I'm gonna do this with the other bedroom, the bathroom, and then we're gonna have one solid floor for this entire room in here. And as you can see, I missed the part here. But the great thing is we can always go back, go to line, go to vertex, and we can fix this. So bring this back down. Then we're gonna to go to refine, we're going to click in a point here, point here, add a few points, and I'm just going to start slotting these points exactly where I need them. And just like that, we have our three floors. The last thing we're going to do, we're going to add in a patio out here. And there we go. We have our floors, we have our walls, and now just what we need to do is we need to add in our assets. So adding assets can be kind of tricky because it is relatively easy, but if you don't have the assets, it can be tricky. So there's plenty of websites like these that you can go to and you can grab them and bring them in. There's plenty of sites that also let you download free models. So we're gonna jump in now and the simple task of just placing the assets in our scene. So now there is adding in the assets. The one thing about the assets, it's technically the simplest, but the trickiest thing is actually getting the assets. There it's just grabbing the objects and things and putting them in the right position. I'm gonna place it in the bedroom where it should be. So now I'm just gonna populate this entire scene with all these objects. So that's that, we have all our assets in. It's all placed in, perfect positioning. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add materials on these floors. So we're gonna have some wooden floors here, we're gonna have tiles here and tiles outside. So let's jump on to the material creation phase. So now we're gonna add some materials to our floors, some wooden flooring. To do that, I'm gonna use my trusty old friend, the material texture loader. I'm gonna click here and we're gonna to go to our maps. So once you're in maps, I'm gonna select this flooring. I'm gonna click open. I'm gonna make sure that I don't need displacement. Tiling, I'm gonna to switch to real world. And we can actually get the exact size we want, but I believe I know the, the correct measurement is about two meters. And then I'm gonna go create material. Okay, that's created. I'm gonna click both of these, apply material to selection. And as you can see, straight away we have our material. Now if I select this, it's after applying a multi UVW map. As you can see, they won't be creating the material that it perfectly aligns to both rooms. They'll make the wood in here and then it'll make the wood in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset one of these just using the UV map, just so it doesn't look like this flooring is going straight into this one. There's actually a wall separating these rooms. So that's the wooden flooring done. Next, we're gonna add in the bathroom tiles. So for the bathroom tiles, I'm gonna again use my material texture loader. I'm gonna select these tiles, open. I'm gonna real world. And for the moment, we'll just do two meters as well and hit create material. And then going to apply it. And there you go, perfect 
tile texture on our bathroom. Now, if you want, you can load in your tiles texture and we can make sure that these are set to the size you want. But well, since we're using real world measurements, then we can see what we've set ours to is two by two meters. And what that means, if I go view image, it means this texture will go every two meters. It will repeat itself from this point to this point over and over every two meters. So let's count this. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, two, one, two, three, two, three, twenty four. So if you say these are usually ten by ten, then that means ten all the way to here, twenty four tiles will be two point four meters. So what we want to do is X this, go all the way to the bottom, select here and go we actually want this two point four by two point four. And that's the actual size of the tiles. So the next thing we're gonna tile is the outside patio. And to do that we're gonna use the material texture again. So I've grabbed some materials that I want here, which is this stone pavement, click open and then go to real world. And again I set this to two meters. We're gonna apply this on now just like this and there we go we have the tiles on here on our patio outside which is exactly what we want so last but not least let's go and create another material for this pavement of the living room and kitchen again I have some materials that I selected I'm going to open up these I'm going to go to real world I'm going to go two meters again and I'm going to go to create material so now that we have that we're going to hit apply up here and there we have our pavement one material we really forgot about is the actual walls themselves. So we're going to add in a stucco kind of wall look. I'm going to grab, grab here. I guess stucco or stucco, I never know which one it is. So we're going to select all these and click open. Real world again, classic two meters and then hit create material. We're going to make sure we have our walls selected and we're going to apply it. And just like that, we have a bit of texture on those walls. So now that's it. And now we have all our materials done. Let's jump on to lighting. So now that we have our scene pretty much set up, we need to add in a camera and we need to add in lighting. Go into your create camera, V-Ray, and drag this any way you want. And I'm just going to put them to the center of the world. We're going to grab the camera. So now it's looking directly down. So I'm going to push this up until we see our whole scene. Now, the one thing we need to change here is the perspective. So we don't want to see the inner walls. We want to see an autographical view but in order to see this let's add our first light so go into lighting v-ray v-ray light change this make sure it's on dome i'm going to click this and i'm going to go to v-ray viewport ipr now it might look quite dark at the beginning so let's adjust our camera settings we're going to change the shutter speed 10 something quite low there we go now it's a bit lit up we'll go for something a tiny bit lower maybe you go for a five so how do we change this that it's not we don't see the side of these walls we only see an autographic graphical view. Well, it's a simple change. Go into your render settings, V-Ray, and we see camera. Change this type from default to autographic. And there you go. Now we see a perfect top-down view with no perspective. But the one thing is, if I hit Shift F, this is what's going to render. So how do we change that? Well, if I go to my DWG, if I switch everything off, except the drawing, and I select the perimeter, we have our perfect square that encompasses the entire model. So if we go to utilities and go to measure, you can see the size here. So that's 8.45 by 8.552, that entire box here. So that means we can go to our render settings. So in here, we can change these settings to match these here. So if I go to custom, I'm gonna put in these values, 8.552, and I'm gonna to lock this in and we obviously don't want to render at 8,000 pixels so I'm going to drop this down to 2,000 and it's going to keep that aspect ratio. You'll see that I have this perfect size so if I start bringing this in if I was to go all the way in and you could use some basic trigonometry to find out the exact height you need to put it in but I'm just going to roughly place it you can see we have a perfect square of our shape and our model. One quick thing we want to change is at the moment the light is going straight through the world. It's infinite, there's no floor plane. So we need to add one in. So go to create, create here, V-Ray, go to V-Ray plane and click and drag that on. We're gonna click and drag a basic material onto this. We actually get a brighter scene, but we also get an actual texture around the edge we can use. It'll bounce the light better as well. Okay, so now let's add a light for each of these windows and openings. Go to create, go to lighting, V-Ray light, click here. And this time it's just going to be a plain light. I'm going to go to my front view and I'm just going to click and drag this on like so. And we're going to bring this out like so. So now we have a light that goes through this area. And we're going to grab this light and do this for every single opening we have. And as we duplicate these, if I bring this over here and duplicate it, I'm going to make it an instant so all these lights can be globally changed at the same time. 
So now that that's done, I'm going to hit my IPO here again, and we'll probably have a much brighter scene, which so we can adjust. There we go. So we can see these lights really coming into effect. And since we made them an instance, you can see that there's 10 of these lights, but we can adjust them all at once. So if I go here, I can set, set these to one and we get back to this kind of dull lighting, but we can go to 15, we increase these and we'll find a kind of look we're looking for. I'm going to add in a ceiling because at the moment we have a lot of light bleeding out and leaving the scene. We want to add in a bit of more realism into the shot. We don't just light going, not bouncing. And I'm going to create a spline of the roof. So that should be pretty easy. Just hit the corners and they're connected all. You go, yes. Convert it to an edible poly and it seems like one of the splines decided to go astray. There we go, edit poly, and now we have a ceiling. Now again, I'm going to go to my materials and I'm just going to apply a basic material on top. And then what we need to do, if I was to hit render here, we're not going to be able to see true. But what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to right click, go into object properties and just not make it visible to camera. And as you can see, it's rendering perfectly. The difference is now we should have a bit more light bouncing. So I want light entering the room, but I don't want things too overexposed. So now that we have this, I'm going to not do IP or I'm going to go into my actual render here and we're going to start changing stuff inside of the light mix. So what does that mean? If I uncheck these, you can see that it's switching on and off the lights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase and decrease this until I like it. So if I decrease this to something like 0.5, it's making it a bit dull, but I can also increase this to something like two and the outside light is getting a bit stronger and penetrating through the scene. So it's about balance, finding what we want. We can also go in here and we can change the color or something. So we want this, uh, want this to be way warmer. So again, you go like something like this, click OK, and straight away we have this warmer kind of feel. And outside, say, actually I want outside light to be a bit more blue. I click OK, and there you have a completely different scene. We can then decrease this to 1.25. And we have a kind of nighttime shot, like coming up just when the sun's setting and we have this completely different look. Now this is up to you. This is a complete personal taste. Again, this might be a bit too strong. We can reduce this, click OK. And there we have a bit more of a balanced shot. It's the sun is actually this, maybe a tiny bit more. And now we have a completely different look in a matter of seconds, thanks to this V-Ray light mix. So now that we're pretty much happy with the lighting, the lights coming in here, the materials are good. I'm going to render this out and we're going to jump into post-production and see what else we can add into this scene. So now that's fully rendered. So let's drag our render into Photoshop. Then the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control, Shift and A and that's going to open up Camera Raw, Feel Light and I'm going to increase the, the exposure a tiny bit, increase the contrast, highlights maybe reduced a tiny bit and we're just pushing and pulling to what I like. Then we can go into our color, say, and we can even change the temperature and make it warmer or make it cooler. I'm going to do slightly warmer, not too much. We can bring up the vibrant. Actually, I'm going to bring that temperature down, sharpen it if we want. So if you go really high up, you can see it's really sharpening, but it's getting a bit noisy. So let's reduce that a bit. Maybe bring in the noise reduction, maybe effects and go to texture, bring that up and clarity. And we can also bring that up and the haze can go down a tiny bit. And then, yeah, just like that, we can hit OK. And then we went from this to this and those quick changes. So now what we can do is we can add in all our passes, drag these into our Photoshop. Once those are loaded in, I'm going to group them and call them passes. And I'm also going to go to layer, new background from layer. So that's our background layer. I'm going to make groups. I'm going to make a few of them and I'm going to name these for each room we have in our house. Okay, now that we have that, we can go into our passes and I'm going to grab the wire color and we're going to start selecting objects in our scene. So first things first, let's grab the patio out here and create a mask. So now that we have the patio group selected and masked out, we can now use any adjustment we want. So if I go in here and do an exposure, if I start changing this, it's only going to check that patio out there. So I can increase the offset here and I can increase the gamma. And just like that, we have a quick change without affecting anything else. Bedroom two, we'll say this is bedroom two, select the flooring, bedroom two, add in a U and saturation. Let's kill the saturation a bit because it looks a bit too strong. We can make it brighter or darker. We can do the same with bedroom two. Let's just copy this one, but we're going to replace the mask. So let's select here, delete this mask and then apply a mask here. And we have the same one affected here, but let's make it a bit more varied. Let's actually increase the 
saturation. So we see a slightly different look here than we do here. The last thing we can do is we can select the pavements here, add in a color balance maybe, and we can start changing the look and color of these tiles if we want a bit more blue. We can also then add in some contrast. If we go into brightness contrast, we can add in contrast there. Maybe we want it brighter. And again, you see I don't have the mask, so let's make sure to copy that up. Don't show again, yes. And then just like that, we've changed the tiling. We can also reduce these. So if I go to living room, I can go to the opacity and just say, actually, I want something in between those. So it's not as a strong of change. The next thing I want to do is reduce the blue in these walls. So I'm going to go into a new folder, grab the walls, put the mask on, call this walls, and I'm going to add a level. Now we're just going to reduce the darkness in this first of all, and then maybe we'll add in a curves, make this a tiny bit brighter. So just like that, we've reduced that blue and made it a bit wider. We still have a hint of blue, but it's not as strong as it was. The powerful thing about rendering 3ds Max is that we now have a bunch of passes to use. So what do I mean? So if I grab, say, this lighting, is the V-Ray lighting one, and I bring this to the top. This is just the lighting that was coming through. So you see this shiny, bright lights. You can see it out here as well. So what we can do is we can use this. Let's put a mask on it, first of all. I don't want any of the outside, and I don't want any of the walls affected. So I can select those, put the mask on, you see it, and then invert the mask by hitting Control i and then we just have this lighting being used. You probably don't want the patio too, so let's select, select the patio. I'm going to fill that. And now what we can do is we can change this to something like screen. And then I'm going to call this lighting, say. Then we can put a mask on, invert it, and now we just don't see anything. I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to put its size a bit higher and its hardness low. We can start painting in where we want a bit of brightness. Again, this is too strong, but once we do this, maybe I do at the edge. And then with this, I can go down here and reduce this like something really low something around 40%. And just like that, we've added in this extra bit of lighting. So we've pretty much got to the end of the video. The last thing I'm gonna say is you should add in your own character, your own style to it. I'm gonna show you what that means now. So let's jump back into Photoshop. So the very last thing you can do is add in your own character, your own style to it. And here I've done a very quick thing, which is adding in this text here and adding in text here with the square footage you have in each room. If you know want to know how to calculate this square footage, all you need to do is go to max, select your object, and in measure, it'll tell you here in your square surface area, 10.03. If you wanted, I could have gone into just 10, but I wanted to keep it in four digits. I hope you can make these floor plans and add your style to it. Maybe you add something onto the outside, some planting or some people you add in on top and you have top view people in the bedroom or in the living room, in the kitchen, maybe someone's cooking something. So the main thing is that you add your own character. I hope I've been able to give you some insight on how you can do that. And I'm sure I'll be able to create more and more of these. And if you like it, please comment down below if you want to see more of this type of work. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.